Okay, in this video, I'm going to begin my tutorials on differential equations. Specifically, I'm going to classify or discuss the classification of differential equations. So in order for us to begin, we need to look at a few definitions. And that, I suppose, really is what classification of differential equations is all about. So first of all, we need to ask ourselves, what is a differential equation? So I'll tell you that a differential equation is any equation involving derivatives. So these derivatives can be ordinary or partial derivatives. So if you look just here, I have in purple a differential equation. So I'll talk about notation later on, but this equation says that if you take the second derivative of y, you add to it a constant multiplied by the first derivative of y, and you add to that a constant times the zeroth derivative of y, and you set that to equal, you set that to equal zero. So this equation, is involving derivatives and as a result it is a differential equation. Now we need to ask ourselves what are ordinary derivatives and partial derivatives. So if you take the derivative of a function which only depends on one variable or a single variable function we talk about a ordinary derivative or an ordinary derivative. So let's say for example we have our function y and it only depends on the variable x so it is a single variable function if we take the derivative of f, or y with respect to x, we'll say that should be y, I suppose, dy dx. If we take dy dx, this is an ordinary derivative, or we, we talk about the total derivative. And we, go, we use this, the, the, the normal d. So this would be pronounced dy dx. It's in contrast to when a function is, uh, is dependent on more than one variable. So if we take a derivative of a function which is multivariable, say for example we take g on the bottom left of your screen, and say g is a function of both x and y and also of z, we can take three different derivatives. We call them partial derivatives. We can take del g del x, del g del y, or del g del z. Each of these we call a partial derivative. So a differential equation which involves taking derivatives of a function which is multivariable, we call that a partial differential equation. And if we take the if we take a differential equation whose derivatives will only be ordinary derivatives, we talk about an ordinary differential equation. The next thing we need to discuss is the order of the equation, and I've written that uh, on the top right of your screen. So the order is the largest derivative in your equation, or the highest, I probably should say, the highest derivative in your equation. So I have three examples written here. So take, for example, del 2y del x squared, or d, excuse me, d2y dx squared is equal to zero. The highest derivative in this equation is the second derivative, because of course there are no other derivatives. So this is a second order differential equation. And second order equations are very, very common in physics. If we look in the middle, we have dy dx plus y is equal to four. So the highest derivative here is the first derivative. So this is a first order differential equation. And if we look at the equation on the right hand side, we have five primes that indicates the fifth derivative. And we have two primes indicating a second derivative. So this is a fifth order differential equation. Now, there are lots of different ways which we can write derivatives. The usual notation is what I suppose it mostly is what I've been using so far. We have, let's say, df dx. Take the derivative of the function f with respect to x. But this really, I suppose, like I said, is this is when we're talking about a single variable rather than a partial equation. But Sometimes this is a bulky form, sometimes it's not a bulky form. Um, sometimes you'll prefer to use this prime notation where we put a single prime above our function to indicate uh, one of the, a single derivative. Two primes meaning a second derivative. Um, the thing about this is, is it's usually used for ordinary equations where it's only a function of one variable or if you want to imply the, de the derivatives of other variables. So for example, let's say, let's say we, take, we talk about the Laplacian. So the Laplacian looks something like this. It's when you take the second derivative with respect to x, you add to it the second derivative with respect to y. 
and you add to that the second derivative with respect to z. Now sometimes, and I suppose I'm skip, skipping ahead a small bit, sometimes you'll be taking the derivative of a function in both its spatial coordinates x, y, and z, and maybe its temporal coordinate t. So of course your Laplacian only acts on your spatial coordinates. And just for, I suppose, sometimes to make things neater, you might imply that you're using the Laplacian. And let's say I wanted to take the Laplacian of u and I want to equal that equal to del 2 u dt squared. Let's say, I, for example, I have this equation. I could write it like this. I could imply on the left-hand side that we're talking about spatial derivatives and just go v double prime like this. Or, excuse me, u double prime. I could do that if I like. And on the right-hand side, as we'll see in a moment, perhaps I could do this. I could write u and two subscripts of t like this. So it, it's up to you on how you define them and making sure that you're defining them correctly. But this I would read as the second derivative of u, implying that we're taking it with respect to the spatial derivatives. And this one here is with respect to the temporal, temporal uh, coordinate. And to, just, I suppose, like I've been using, we can also take use a notation for partials. And let's say we have g a function of x, y, and z. Del g del x will be g sub x. Del 2g del z squared would be g sub z z. Just like I have up here, we have u sub t t, implying the second derivative with respect to t of our function u. And like I said, just to say it one more time, with the risk of boring you, that here I'm implying that we're, that we're differentiating with respect to all of the spatial coordinates, because u in this case is a function of x, y, and z in the, in the, in the spatial coordinates. So to move on, if we want to define whether a function is linear or nonlinear, we need to, I suppose, look at it in a number of ways. And this is a very important property of differential equations. So an equation is linear where, first of all, there are no products of the function or its derivatives. So I'm just trying to find my cursor, believe or believe not. Okay, there we go. So the equation is linear where there are no products of the function or its derivatives. So for example, if we're talking about, let's say this equation here, so let's say we have plus x times y is equal to zero. So the function clearly is y and it would be incorrect or it would not be linear if we had, for example, a, I don't know, let's say a y squared term. But an x squared term is just fine because that's not of the function itself. We're only allowed to have first powers of the function or its derivative, just like I've shown you there, only first powers. So for example, y squared is not allowed, but x squared is allowed if it's, if y, if it's y a function of x. So we're only allowed to have first powers of the function. Now only the function or its derivatives are used to determine linearity. So we don't look at, we'll say, any other terms, the constants or, you know, uh, or the actual variables themselves. We just look at the function and its derivatives to determine linearity. Now, I suppose the most general way to determine linearity is by saying that you must be able to write your equation in the following form. Now, while that looks I suppose bulky, perhaps even confusing. If you look at what we have here is we have a sub n, so it's the nth coefficient, and we have the nth derivative. I'm implying here we're talking about derivatives rather than powers. We have another coefficient, we have one less derivative, and we work the whole way down to the first coefficient and the first derivative, the zeroth coefficient, and the zeroth derivative. So if you can write your equation in this particular form, then your equation is said to be linear. Now you might say, well, all the equations I've ever seen look like this. Well, that's fine. But there are, I can assure you that there are other equations out there that do not fit this form. And as a result, they are non-linear equations. So just to take some examples, if we look at the bottom left of your screen, and I'm just going to clean this up a small bit. Okay, so we have five equations written on the bottom left of your screen. I'm going to just number them. So we have one, two, three, we have four, and we have five. So if you look at equation one, we have x prime plus y prime is equal to zero. 
So notice we don't have any powers of either the function x or the function y. We have no products or their derivatives. So this is a linear equation. If you look at equation two, once again, we have no powers of x. We have, you know, we have x, the function on its own. We have, twi we have twice the first derivative. And we also, we, but we have sine t. Now it isn't sine x, it's sine t. So we'll say x might be a function of t. So as a result, this is a linear equation because it's not taking the sine of the function, it's taking a sine of the variable. This is a linear equation. If you look at equation three, we have x prime plus t squared x is equal to zero. Once again, this t squared is the variable, but rather the function, but not the function. So as a result, it is a linear equation. Uh, looking at equation four, for the same reason as we saw on equation two, that the constant g of t, or excuse me, the, um, the coefficient g of t, or whatever you want to call it here, is a function of t, where y might be also a function of t. But we're not taking, uh, we're not doing anything with the, the function itself y, and as a result, we have a linear equation. And I suppose then we look at a nonlinear linear equation uh, number five. So the y double prime here is okay. But if you notice, we're after taking two powers of the function y, which is not allowed, and also after taking, after taking the exponential of, of the, the function itself, y, which is not allowed. Now let's say y was a function of t, and we had e to the, five, e to the minus 5t like this. This term would be correct, but this term here would still be incorrect. And if I removed this term, we would now have a linear equation. Okay, so it's, if you see exponentials, don't automatically, or, or excuse me, exponential sinusoids or whatever, don't automatically assume you have a nonlinear equation. It depends on whether or not they're acting on the function or its variable. So on the top right of your screen, I need to discuss the second last um, property of the differential equations which I'm going to discuss, specifically whether a linear, excuse me, an equation is homogeneous or non-homogeneous. So how do we decide if it's homogeneous or not? Now, first of all, most likely if you're in university, you'll be studying homogeneous equations. If you're discussing a non-homogeneous equation, it'll most likely be a very simple one. More, more often than not, it'll be a homogeneous equation. So first of all, we take all the derivatives to one side of the equation. So if, uh, if the variable terms, if there are var variable terms remaining, then it's non-homogeneous. So let's say, for example, we take, in this case, say we, we number these again, one, two, three, and four. So say we take all the x terms, or all the derivatives of x and the function itself to the left. We're left with a zero on the right-hand side. So there are no other terms on the right-hand side. This is a homogeneous equation. Now, in contrast, let's say x is a function of t. We have this sine t term left over, which is not, well, it's not x, and as a result, this is a non-homogeneous equation. If we look at equation three, we've taken all the terms which involve x to the left. It allows us to set this equal to zero. It's a homogeneous equation. And this one in number equation number four is non-homogeneous, not because of this term here, but rather because of this term. This t squared on the right-hand side makes, sure, makes it a non-homogeneous equation. So the last thing we need to discuss, and this is very important, is whether or not the const, excuse me the coefficients are constant or variable because it is the the coefficients which determine how you solve your differential equation so if we look we can have in general two different types of constants you can have variable constants or you can have um constant excuse me variable coefficients <laughs> variable coefficients or constant coefficients now the easiest one to start with is number two which is constant coefficients so I've written it as a of t, which is a variable, is equal to just a constant. I suppose that's the best way perhaps of writing it. So when we have constant coefficients in our differential equation, we solve it using the method of the characteristic equation, which I will discuss in a later video. However, if we have variable coefficients, let's say it's, let's say we have the function capital X, well then we require power series solutions. So if you're looking to find out when do we apply power series solutions, when can we use the method of separate or method of the characteristic equation? We need to look at the coefficients. Constant coefficients mean you can use the characteristic equation. Variable coefficients means you must use power series. And if you have 
Um, if you have poles or singularities, you might need to use the method of Frobenius. So just before we finish, I have one last thing I'd like to just, I suppose, not discuss, but just say that let's just go back to this equation here. So if I was to put some English on what this equation here is, so it is, first of all, it's a second order equation. It is linear because there are no powers or anything like that of the function y. So it's a second order linear equation. It has constant coefficients a and b. So it's a second order linear equation with constant coefficients and it's homogeneous. So you might say to yourself, you might get lost with all these different terms. It's uh, It might be difficult, but after a while you just get used to it. He'll say it's a second order linear differential equation with constant coefficients and it's homogeneous as well. All right, so that's all I've got to say about that. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends, subscribe to my channel, and you might also give me a comment in the comment box below.